What's up guys, Shane here from Fugitech 3D Printing and today is an exciting day. We're gonna unbox and do our first print with the Anycubic Photon SLA 3D printer. Welcome back guys. So, super exciting day because my Anycubic Photon finally came in. I ordered this off Amazon and I ordered this with money from my patrons. So a huge thank you to my patrons out there for being supporters of my channel. You enabled me to finally get into some resin 3D printing, which I've been wanting to do for a while now. I now have one to do myself. So this is gonna be fun. So this is gonna be a multi, well, it's gonna be one video, but I'm kinda gonna skip through some things. We'll do a quick unboxing, take a look at the printer. I wanna go do a print and I'll leave it cure tomorrow and then I'll come back tomorrow night and we'll go ahead and look at that print. But yeah, I just wanna see what's in here, get a print done, see how well it works and have some first looks at it. So let's get into it. Right, we have a user manual. Uh, we have, oh, these are the extra uh, sheets, the FEP for the actual bed or the tray that's in there and it tells you all everything you need to know on setting it up. All right, up top, we have a bottle of their green, 500, millimeter, 500 milliliters of their green resin. This comes with pretty much every Anycubic Photon I've seen. It's that translucent green. And uh, it's 500 milliliters, and again, the wavelength, I did, oh, I shouldn't say again. Uh, so the wavelength that this printer uses is 40405 nanometers. So anytime you buy other resin, you have to use that. I did see a video talk about that. A USB drive, so that's not an interesting thing, is this, this thing goes off of USB, not micro or regular SD card. We have a US power plug, uh, some accessories, so screwdriver, some gloves, a mask, uh, screws, a uh, plastic scraper. Uh, here we have a nice little Allen wrench with a handle on it, like that. Uh, here we have the external power supply, which is six amps. So not a whole lot of power being used by this printer. <laughs> this is a surprisingly heavy printer. I think it's like 20 or 20 some pounds. Oh, there it is. There it is, right there. Let's get this rest of the way out. Uh, okay, Whew. look at that. Let's get some of these off here. And we open it up here. Here is the build plate. So this is what basically smushes into the resin and comes up and you get your print underneath. Ah, this is exciting. Super exciting. And we have some more stuff in here. Uh, here we have, oh, these are the uh, filters for when you pour your resin back into the bottle. I need to turn this a little bit more so I can see what I'm doing here. This other. And then here we have the vat. Ooh, which is heavier than I was expecting. Much heavier. So this is the vat here that your resin goes in. So we'll just set that down. And I did see another video that I said to check the display and it doesn't look like there's any cracks in it. So that's pretty good. And I did actually watch a few videos on leveling the bed. And one other thing you have to do right now is the knob, whoops, that's not the right thing. Here it is, so this is the doorknob uh, because they ship it, which actually is really smart the way they did it. So you don't have to worry about it breaking off. There's our handle. Satisfying, oh, there's a magnet there at the bottom, kind of keeps that shut. That's very satisfying. Nice quality handles looks like, big th thick lead screw. Man, all right. So, all right, let's plug this in and um, go from there. The tools, Muzi, and home. Okay. All right, now we're going to take our build plate here. I'll loosen this up. Slide it on. 
All right, so now it goes through the software, which uh, I've already started playing with that on my desktop, so I'll go ahead and check that out. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and load up their uh, test G code with their uh, resin that they came with this and see how it prints. I'll see you guys back in a minute once it's cured and taken care of and all that jazz. All right, so it's actually been a few days. I thought I was gonna come back the next day and record, but uh, I ended up doing a live stream. So this is a couple days later, and I actually am getting a bunch more parts done. So I did the, the first uh, test print first that they said to do, and I was immediately blown away, and I didn't even do any like real proper cleaning on it, and it still came out great. And then I did an array of others, and I finished some. And if you guys have been watching my social media, you will have seen that I've been posting all of those uh, marvelous, marvelous 3D prints, because this thing has come out not perfect, but mind-blowing well. And I think the non-perfect part might just be me. I'm not sure if it's the machine, because again, this is my first SLA resin 3D printer. I still have a lot to learn. And I've learned already a ton in the different slicers and I was using their slicer first. Then I switched to the Chutu box or Chutlo box, whatever it's called. And I used that for a while and then I actually had scaled things wrong. So there was a bunch of problems that I had to go through in the past, you know, three, four days, but I'm through all of them and the results are exquisite, I must say. So let me show you a close look at those. So again, obviously first they said to do their test print. And it's this little cube that sits on basically these three little points down there on a base, round of base, and it prints up. This is the make on the lattice uh, torture tube kind, uh, torture cube that uh, Angus had made at Maker's Muse. And it says any cubic and photon in there. It's hard to see, but this thing literally is perfect. There's not a single blemish that I can feel or see or anything and it actually was kind of as it was printing peeling away a little bit and I was like oh no it's gonna fail but uh, apparently that happens with this print just because of the way this is and yeah I mean this is an exquisite model all right so the next thing I printed is this this is the Jade key from ready player one again not a perfect model but I think it's outstanding either way so there was a little bit of white in here, and there's actually still just a little bit in there, and that was from me not cleaning. Again, this was before I actually started scrubbing the prints and actually like cleaning them properly. I've learned a lot since then, and some of the support had failed down on here a little bit, as you can see. And I just, again, it was just me using auto supports and not playing with the settings from there. And then you kind of see the little diplets on the top here. That is from where the right there. That's from where the support was touching and those are easy to be cleaned off, but I didn't do any of that on this. I literally just got it out, cleaned it up a little bit and hit it with some clear coat, some high gloss clear coat, but it's actually not glossy as you can tell. I don't know why, but the acrylic high gloss paint that I have just didn't, uh, didn't do the job. So I'm gonna see if I can find some for my airbrush and I also didn't polish this. So that would be another thing to do is to learn how to polish acrylic or uh, the resin and go from there but it is pretty clear you can see my finger behind it the clarity is really nice on this this is this this is the green resin that came with the printer all right next i went ahead and did my uh my maker coin that i always make at 200 percent scale which is what this is and i added a little bit of i hollowed it out and added some infill because i wanted to see what it would look like and i was curious what the setting actually did i learned a lot from that so it looks uh bad <laughs> i can say that and i definitely could have did a better job on you know kind of checking it out before i ended up doing the print and then i did add in a hole right here at the bottom it's really hard it's really small it was too small i think i did uh two or three millimeters i should need to do at least five on hollow prints to get the resin fully out and you can see this part here is a little more shiny uh, because some of the resin uh, was on there and had cured over top of this and that's kind of what resin does so my thing is like i don't know should i take some resin like paint this and then cure it again I, I don't really don't know um so again i have to do a lot of learning about how to do that but this coin looks amazing it really does uh, i did have one problem here and it's in the back there are these see these 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 two this one and this one right here those actually have um, I can feel the divots in them. And that is just where the support 
was touching. I'm guessing the walls are just too thin to have support. I think these are two millimeter walls. So I really think I need to do a little bit heavier on that and that way I won't feel that come in. Uh, but it was printed basically kind of like this at an angle in there. Uh, so that's where all the supports were in here. Easy to clean out. Again, not really much post-processing. I love to shine this up, but just wanted to see what would, how to hollow an object in the slicer, how to add a hole, and what does the infill look like when we actually print it. So I learned all of that with this model. I randomly saw this in the uh, Anycubic group. It's a pickle. It literally is a uh, scan, a 3D scan of a pickle. And he said it works great in the Anycubic Green, and it really does. And it's kind of fitting because I'm from Pittsburgh and the Heinz Pickles, there's Picklesburg there every year. So uh, this was kind of fun. I might want to remodel it and put Heinz in there. Um, and yes, Heinz like the ketchup, they do their own pickle festival. And again, it's a little bit of resin leaked out the bottom. So that part is a little shinier than the rest of everything else. All right, the last model I did in green is a green lantern. So it's really hard to see there, but um, you can kind of see it just because it's so, it is really clear, honestly. I was very surprised by that. I actually thought it would be a little more, but it's pretty frosted here on the sides. So what I need to do is um, learn again how to polish all of this and polish it, and then paint it maybe, and see how that ends up going. And then again, support kind of jacked up on the bottom, so you can see it's kind of clipped away. I had to uh, mutilate it a little bit. So again, still learning, but man, the quality on this is pretty outstanding. And I went and opened up another uh, uh, vat of resin, or a bottle of resin. Uh, this is the Anycubic Orange, and um, it, it printed, I mean, this was, I just threw it in. Didn't even relevel the bed. I didn't relevel the bed on any of these. I leveled it once and printed everything. So that's pretty crazy about the machine. I threw this on, I added a five millimeter hole in the bottom again. You can see the shiny part. That's a little bit of resin that didn't quite get cleaned out. I need to learn how to clean out the inside of these properly. I think I need to get like maybe a syringe and squirt IPA in there and just shake it around. But uh, yeah, again, still need to learn. And it was printed at an angle. I think it was printed like this at an angle. So that's, you know, that's why there's all the support under it. You're not supposed to print things flat like that. You're supposed to print them at an angle. And I probably could have did a better one than have less support on it, but didn't really, again, still learning all of it and making sure that I can learn how to do it. But this is also completely hollow with a two millimeter wall, but this looks outstanding. So yeah, I, so like I said, in kind of the close-ups, I didn't re-level this bed once. I did it the first time uh, following a guide I found online, which was an excellent guide. I'll make sure I link that down below. But I leveled it once, didn't level it since then. I don't know if you're supposed to every print or not, but I didn't. Uh, this thing stays pretty rock solid once you just crank that down, that's in there. Once you make sure the bed is in there properly and you pour it each time, clean it each time. Cleaning was pretty easy, but I kind of have to slow down now because I'm running low on supplies already. So between the, um, it gives you a good bit of supplies. You can get a good probably 15 prints done with what they send you. Um, not without the gloves, no. You can get like four or five prints done with the gloves that they send you, but I had already bought a box. So what they send you, you can get a few test prints done with the resin that it comes with. And honestly, after doing all that printing, there is still a ton left in this bottle. And again, this is the, this is the green that came with it. And I ordered orange as well, and I also ordered black. And I have a couple other brands I'm gonna order, and I'm gonna, I hopefully wanna start reviewing resin with this machine and that way I can start seeing how the printer does with other resins because I'm sure people want to know how do resins perform. So I'm going to buy a bunch and start, you know, just reviewing those. But this thing, out of the box, I was printing in like 15 minutes uh, because I was recording mostly and it's crazy. The smell, wife doesn't like. I don't mind it too much, but what I did was when I was printing in here, I turned my fan the other way so I was blowing air out. I had another fan in here blowing towards the window and I'd close the door and I was out there printing. This now has a home, its own table, just like this one, nice and wobbly. Uh, it has its own home outside in a storage room outside of our kitchen. And I've set everything up there. So I have my IPA tank, I have all my tools, everything I need to print 
process and cure is down there. And I'm gonna go over that in a different video uh, because I kind of have my flow down now, I think. And I'm gonna be making a custom curing station, but I'm waiting for my turntable to come in so I can do it properly. But I will start filming that and doing that probably in a week or two and get that out so you guys can see what a DIY uh, resin curing chamber looks like. And I'm using a one of those nail thing for you women to do the nail curing. I'm using one of those because it's super bright and uh, does a great job. Uh, on these, it's done a great job so far. So I can't wait to show you guys how I'm gonna create that. I need to do it first if I can show you, but. So full disclaimer on this, this was purchased by basically my patrons and everyone that uses my affiliate links. So if it wasn't for people using those, I wouldn't get the things that I, I wouldn't get the payouts from Patreon. I wouldn't get the Amazon gift cards from people using the affiliate links. And because of that, I was able to purchase this. Again, it goes on sale for 365, plus I ordered so a couple bottles of resin and I ordered a bunch of supplies. So about $500 later uh, is what it ended up coming to. And again, I would have no means whatsoever to purchase that if it wasn't for all of you that watch the videos and help out. It actually turns into real things. It does for me at least. I don't know other people, but for me, I put that money that I make, I put it right back into the channel, whether it's buying a new camera or I now have the Cam 4 link for my, for my video editing or for filming. I now have this printer. Things happen and you guys are amazing. And I hope to keep doing this and I hope you all keep supporting me. So if you do wanna check out this printer, which I highly suggest you do, I'll put a link down below. Keep an eye on it for uh, it to go back on sale. I think right now it's like 430. So if you're comfortable paying that much, it's still worth it. I mean, regardless, it is still worth the money. But 365 is pretty nice. And I hope to get more into resin printing. I hope to get more resins here, more printers here so I can learn more and help share my experiences with you guys. So a huge thank you to every one of you. And that's gonna be it. So it's kind of a longer video, but I kind of wanted to dive into this. And again, I usually just live stream, but there's just, uh, it's too much to do on a live stream. And I wasn't really prepared to like do my very first time on live with this. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I wanna hear from you guys in the comments. So please put some comments down below what you guys thought about the video, the printer and anything else that I had uh, during this uh, video. If you guys wanna support me and help me do awesome things like buy 3D printers like this, please become a patron. Down below is a link for that. Don't need a dollar more. You can access my Patreon feed. Two dollars get you a sticker. Higher tiers get you a little bit more. Uh, I appreciate every single one of you, even the guys donating a dollar a month. It is awesome and your, uh, your dedication and support of my channel is truly shown by being able to do things like this. Other ways you can help out again, one-time donations down there, Streamlabs, buy me a coffee. There's a ton of fill-in links down there with coupon codes. Check all that out again. Will you guys buy there? I reinvest uh, it back into my channel to make it better. So I truly thank you guys for helping me out. And until next time, happy branding.